There's a common perception that there is a conflict between science and the Christian faith. But is that really the case? I'm joined today by Dr. A.J. Roberts, a virologist, a molecular biologist, and a Christian to help me answer that question. So, A.J., what would you say to somebody who says there's a conflict between science and Christianity? Fuzz, I've never really experienced a personal conflict between science and Christianity. And I came to Christ at a very early age, and I started to love science uh, as far back as I can remember, probably fourth or fifth grade. Um, Actually, it wasn't until I started graduate school at UPenn that I had one of my fellow classmates ask me how on earth could I believe in uh, God and be serious about my science. So I've never really had a conflict uh, or experienced a conflict between the two, but I know other people have. Uh, well, then how is it possible to be a person of faith and to work as a scientist with integrity? I think that my faith is actually the motivation for my integrity. I think that it motivates me to do my science uh, with excellence, uh, to pursue truth, uh, and then in doing that, I'm, I'm discovering uh, what God has made possible in the universe and, and what uh, he's revealed in nature. I think that it helps me design my experiments with uh, the right parameters. I think it helps me interpret the data with uh, integrity. And so my faith is really the motivation behind the integrity that I've experienced. Now, have you ever had doubts about your faith? I have. Uh, I've actually had doubts on a couple of different levels. Um, I've doubted whether or not God existed from time to time, and I've also doubted whether or not what I've believed to be true is actually an accurate or correct belief. Um, the way that I've dealt with those doubts, especially the one about uh, God's existence, I've been very fortunate that I've had Christians in my life uh, at those times, and I've shared those doubts with them, and I felt like that they've really bolstered my doubts with their faith and prayed me through some of those issues. But as I've experienced sort of the existential crisis that those doubts have led to personally, um, it's, it's left me with this sense of, well, God must be true. Because if he's not true, I don't understand what life's all about or what, what, why this life is even significant. So those existential crises have actually driven me back to a very solid foundation of saying, God must exist, because if he doesn't, life doesn't make sense. Now, has there ever been anything from science that has caused doubts for you? Uh, there have been things in science that have, have led to uh, doubts, and one of those was also in graduate school. Uh, I was seeking what I call integration, sort of in, uh, integrating my faith and my science together rather than holding the two apart in graduate school more than I had at any point before that. and. Because I'd never sort of strongly considered alternative explanations, I was very much entrenched in the evolutionary camp. And a good friend of mine who was, who was not in that camp and who was a Christian said, well, how do, you, how do you deal with the image of God being put into humanity in Adam and Eve if you come from an evolutionary perspective? And so I really started to struggle to try to integrate uh, how do I explain the Imago Dei or the image of God in humanity if I believe that these evolutionary processes at some point humanity just evolved from some other form of hominid that existed before us. So that was, that was a real challenge to my, my theological understanding of, of Adam and Eve and uh, I wrestled with that for quite a while. Yeah, so how did you resolve that issue? Uh, I resolved that issue the same way that I had resolved previous doubts uh, about things that I had believed and those, those had come into question. Uh, so I did that through studying and trying to seek what was true about, about my beliefs, about theology, and about the science as well. So um, when it c came to, again, uh, the idea of humans being made in God's image, uh, did you ever entertain the notion of theistic evolution? Actually, I did. I, that was sort of the position that I adopted during graduate school was theistic evolution. But I was very uncomfortable in that camp because I didn't feel like I had a good response for when during the course of evolution did God imprint uh, the image of God in humanity. So it was actually not until many, many years later that I started to look more closely at what others had written in response to the Imago Dei and, and to Adam and Eve and to critiques of evolution in general. And through those studies, I actually came more out of the camp of theistic evolution and I'm now leaning more towards the camp of old earth creationism. So the bottom line is that 
Uh, it is possible to be a person of faith and a person of science, and that sometimes things aren't always a nice, neat package, but as you continue to wrestle through uh, the difficulties, uh, resolution comes many times. It does, and I actually find the process very helpful because it ends up strengthening my faith, uh, building a stronger foundation, and I think it's important to continue to seek truth. I think that's important as a scientist and as a Christ follower.